boys in the building and shit. So hit the panic button. Charlie broke and Pumero, so we should have something. We special life. Wild Plains, badass cowboys, hot girls, a subtitle that reminds me of Exodus. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot not to like about Call of Juarez bound in blood. I mean, aside from the technical issues and lack of polish, but the game still had charm. That's why I was really excited to see the sequel, and spitting tobacco and glaring at me from across the prairie, standing right in the middle of my work queue for the week. And yes, we have a prairie. It's vast. And prairie-ish. So imagine my disappointment when I load up the sequel to a fun shooter that takes place in the 1860s and hear rap music. Of all things, f***ing rap music. Not to mention the swearing Latino gangsters, the semi-automatic weapons, the Fox News look alike. Oh, come on, not... Not rap President music and Fox stop. News. Are you serious, bro? Related violence. This is Call of Juarez, the cartel. Or at least it's supposed to be. I'm hoping this is just some kind of cruel joke on a broski. There's no way Call of Juarez would go from a badass fire and brimstone preacher to a Halle Berry look-alike and and some guy wearing a President Obama mask. How? how what? I'm. This is not change I can believe in, Call of Juarez. Of course, it's about more than just the superficial change in setting. It's almost like someone said, Hey, let's make a game that's kind of like Call of Juarez, only without any of the same feel or character, and only we'll call it Call of Juarez anyway. It's not like... Call of Juarez is some incredible series to begin with, so to water it down, I mean, that is an immensely unadvisable decision, but unfortunately, it's already been made. And my best explanation is that someone must have been really hot. Okay, okay, so this, now it's starting to come together. So here's what the cartel does. It takes everything that was good about Bound in Blood away, it makes its flaws even worse, and it replaces the characters that were actually likable with characters out of some generic CBS crime drama. Mexican drug cartels are doing what Mexican drug cartels do, and it's up to three wildly different law enforcement officials to stop them. Well, ben comes closest to what you'd expect from Call of Juarez, only he's completely unlikable and kind of a douche. Similarly unlikable are the game's mechanics. Unlikable in the sense that they're so boring, you'll want to go to war against video game cartels just to keep this crap off the streets. The mechanics are solid, but the levels are so repetitive and dull. It's like, this stuff happens, but absolutely nothing happens. You walk to dots, you get swarmed by enemies, you repeat the process until the end of the level. Oh, and what, once in a while, you might have to drive around too, which is about as fun as driving in real life. Looks that like is to say, I almost fell asleep and crashed into a ravine. And even plane. that would have been a prettier sight than these graphics. The cartel tries really hard to capture the aesthetic charms of Bound in Blood, but it fails miserably. This game actually looks worse than its 2009 predecessor, which at least Ooh, looked cool despite its technical like flaws. I, I can't even comprehend that I'm actually standing in a field of pot. The game plays worse than Bound in Blood 2, but by now, you should be noticing a pattern. This is a really strange turn for the franchise, not only in terms of style and setting and tone, but also in terms of quality. And in fact, that's the most noticeable drop. And although you can play through the cartel with three different characters to get, you know, different endings and such, you probably won't even want to finish with one character. It lacks horses, it lacks saloons, but most importantly, the cartel lacks fun. Go! Get down! 